We um, are very excited to um, have Dr. DePola establish a practice within the practice here. Uh, she's going to be able to uh, soak up the environment of functional medicine here, uh, utilize uh, some of the modalities that we have, such as lifestyle therapy and uh, other things that we provide for our patients to complement her practice. And uh, it's really exciting to have a medical doctor on board because it's, we all give our own little slant to natural medicine, don't we? Uh, there's the chiropractic slant. If you come from that end, you put that slant on it. If you're a naturopathic doctor, you put that slant on it. And if you're a medical doctor, you put that slant on it. And we can all use our expertise in our own way while still accomplishing the, the, the common goal, which is uh, the wellness of the patient, make the patient thrive instead of survive. Uh, Dr. DePola is from Russia. Um, uh, she dared me to start using their names where uh, she graduated from, and uh, on second thought, I'm going to let you do that. <laughs> so, um, uh, I, 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 uh, from, from what I've learned from Dr. DePola, our background is very similar, and that's not surprising. Uh, uh, Europe, uh, the continent, uh, seems to carry a lot of the health philosophy across all uh, the countries. Um, it's interesting, the boundary for holistic medicine really uh, starts in the very southern part of France. When you get into Spain, all of a sudden it becomes more medical again. Uh, I, I don't know why that is. It's just a, a very fascinating shift, but from there on north, it's very natural, very holistic, and then it spreads east uh, all, all the way into Russia. Um, functional medicine uh, is really gaining traction here. It is uh, not really alternative anymore. It's uh, uh, becoming a main player. Um, and uh, I, I'm excited to see uh, the medical profession really uh, getting on board with a lot of aspects of it and, uh, and, and providing that. So Dr. DePola is, uh, will be start to accept new patients tomorrow. And um, we'll, uh, you'll see her uh, as far as our uh, uh, monthly talks, I hope. And uh, I uh, welcome her and Andrew uh, uh, to uh, our uh, functional medicine fold. So, uh, without further ado, why don't we just start in on this uh, whole sure. digestive business? Well, thank you so much. Oh, you're for welcome. Your introduction. I'm really glad to be here today. Um, thank you all for coming. I'd like to thank Dr. and Dr. Stacy, Amy, and all DBC staff for. Can you hear me? Yeah. I can hear yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> for having me here today. Um, um, I'm not going to talk much about my background. You can see that from the website. And Hopefully the letter that will receive my email uh, on the mail. But I basically graduated in um, Russia and became medical doctor there first, and then had all the um, additional education here in the U.S. And I'm very happy to be here today. So we're gonna talk about. Oh, that was supposed to be my part yet, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, I jumped in. Do you want well, to go yeah, ahead? I'm sure, well, I'll go ahead and do that. Do you want to join me on this one? So, we're so organized. Um, so, so really, we wanted to introduce uh, uh, Dr. DePola and then go into why are we covering today what we're covering? And how can ADD be related to the digestive system? Because an ADD patient comes in, one of our main focus is going to be the digestive system. How about? Inflamed, your, your gut is inflamed, so that makes it makes a big difference. Um, when we discuss autoimmune, she's she's going to really talk about how autoimmune is there. So, how does MS and Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and eczema really relate to the gut? We're gonna we're gonna really divulge in that tonight. Um, my love and my baby is down here. <laughs> but being a female, I think it's very important that your hormones are balanced. Um, obviously, I'm sure guys who are married believe that as well. <laughs> that it's very important to have your hormones balanced, and and this can stem from a lot of different sources. And one of them being the gut, which we are going to cover as well this evening. Um, depression does run with this a lot of a lot of times you will see an imbalance and that hormone can also be vitamin D so we will touch a little on that as well tonight so uh, in, in the uh, in the, uh, in, the um, in, in Europe uh, depression is called a gut disease it is a gut disease first so 
we'll, we'll, we'll be able to get into that. Uh, the arthritis. Uh, 23 years ago, I uh, wrote an, uh, a large research article on, on how rheumatoid arthritis is really leaky gut syndrome, a gut disorder. This is stuff we've known for decades, folks. It's not being treated as a gut disorder. We're given drugs for rheumatoid arthritis that harm the intestinal wall. We're given drugs, but one of the side effects is actually decreased cartilage function, softening it up. So we're definitely on the wrong road when it comes to arthritis. And, and coming back to hormonal, I was, uh, one of the common things that Dr. Stacy does for um, uh, your basic change, uh, the post -par uh, postpartum as well as uh, menopausal symptoms is to give fiber. Why would you give fiber for those hormone changes? So we're going to get into that. Fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome. If there's one thing that's common in, in this complex group of patients, which we see way too many of, is digestive slash liver dysfunction. So Dr. DePaul is gonna get through into the anatomy, into some of the fascinating uh, things. Uh, she's got some great slides in here. I, of course, have had a, a sneak peek at it. Um, I was very fascinated by the slide on the medical approach uh, versus the functional medicine approach. Um, uh, so that will be coming your way and Dr. DePaul is going to cover all this stuff in detail. So now you can take it away. You all know the topic for today. So this is the organ that produces three-fourths of the all neurotransmitters, the chemicals that transmit signals. Um, that's the organ that contains two-thirds of all immune tissues, the uh, immune tissue prevents us from infection. Our organ of the body contains 10 times more cells than the rest of our body combined, so it's really a large organ. And um, the bacteria of the body has a level of activity greater than the liver. Um, and there's a saying, you're as healthy as your gut. Why is the gut? Again, 70% of Americans have gut symptoms or diseases. This is the most sensitive organ with multiple common insults. Um, most diverse and uh, mutable clinical manifestation comes from the imbalance of the gut. Um, and um, the most effective clinical outcomes <coughs> across all disease. If you normalize the gut function, you oftentimes normalize a lot of things. Um, as you all know, Prilosec. Prilosec is um, the top of the pharmaceutical sales. Uh, National says more than $4 billion, and we just learned about side effects of the Prilosec and all the things that we're getting <laughs> with the Prilosec. It just tells you how, um, how important this problem right now in the U.S. And this is a um, little slide on the healthcare today. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to ask, uh, does somebody know how to conceptualize a uh, helicopter tank and solar energy? Does that, anybody know who was the person who conceptualized helicopter idea, tank, and the solar energy? Does anybody know? <laughs> Any guesses? Da Vinci. Very good. So I, I love Da Vinci. I'm a big fan of him, and I have decided to include some of his. Um, ideas in the presentation. I think it's very good for, um, for us as professionals to um, have this insight and for everybody who is interested in getting more healthy and having, you know, better health, um, kind of follow the advice of the issues. So the first principle of Leonardo's unsatiable curiosity and the fact that you're all here today kind of tells me that you are curious about your health. So why irritable bowel syndrome that we're going to talk about it today? Um, it affects about 10 to 20 percent of all U.S. adults. Um, traditionally, it affects more female than male, but we see the shift right now with that. Um, most people never seek medical help, um, and some of the some of those people who seek medical help never really get any relief from traditional medicine. Um, if they usually the typical story a person who has a problem with God is they go to a conventional doctor, they get a bunch of tests ordered for them, they never see any results, there is really no um, cure for IBS. Um, and um, best case scenario, they're going to be put on antidepressive medications, and that, that would be the end of the story. And some of them refer to gastroenterologists. Um, there is no obvious change in bowel structure, meaning 